Grade 8 math number 15.2e, we're going to create a two-way relative frequency table. We can get relative frequencies from a two-way frequency table. And two-way relative frequency tables show both joint relative frequencies and marginal relative frequencies. And the sum of each joint relative frequency in a row or column must equal the marginal relative frequency for that row or column. Now, what does that mean? All right, well, let's take a look at this. Joint relative frequency is found by dividing a frequency that's not in the total row, see, or the total column. And we divide, so that would be any one of these four in the center up here, we would divide that by the grand total, see. Marginal relative frequency is found by dividing a row total or column by the grand total. So that would be down here, any of these totals or these totals divided by the grand total, see. So think of it this way. You know how the margin of your paper is along the edge or the side of your paper? Well, marginal relative frequencies are along the side or edge. So you can remember, that's where the marginal ones and the joint ones are on the inside there, see? And it's divided by the grand total, and these are divided by the grand total. So they're both divided by the grand total, so that's going to be easy to remember. So just remember, you divide these center ones by the grand total for joint, and you divide the marginal ones, the ones along the margin, by the grand total for the marginal relative frequency, okay? We can use relative frequency tables and two-way relative frequency tables to show what part of the entire data set is represented by each category or category pair. And we can get joint relative frequencies from these tables along with marginal relative frequencies. In the coming up video, we're going to talk about conditional relative frequencies, okay? So we can create a two-way relative frequency table by dividing each number from a two-way frequency table by the grand total and writing the quotients as decimals. So we can get a two-way relative frequency table by doing these, by dividing these numbers by the grand total or dividing these marginal numbers by the grand total, okay? So here's a two-way frequency table. We're still doing our t-shirts are red, blue, and green t-shirts that were sold and the females and the males that purchased them. And this is just a plain old two-way frequency table. See, it's just got the frequencies in it. And it's two-way because we've got two different sets of data. We've got the color of the t-shirts and what gender purchased them. See, that's why it's two-way. All right. If it was just a regular frequency table, it would just say people who bought it and we would just have these two lines right here would be gone and it would just say red 15, blue 25, green 10. That's a frequency table. The minute it's two-way, we've now got color and gender who purchased it. See, it's two types of data. Now a two-way relative frequency table, the minute we put in the fractions, decimals, percents, it becomes relative. So we went from having a two-way frequency table to a relative frequency table because we went from just having the numbers, the frequencies in it, to having these fractions and decimals or percents inside of the table. See? That makes it relative frequency because now it's a ratio, okay? So maybe you can think of the R for relative with R for ratio, okay? Like a fraction. And if you're really, really confused, you can watch my video number 15.2a. It's in this playlist, and it was a few videos back, and there's a link in the description, and I have all of these tables side by side, so you can just look at them and compare them side by side, okay? So we check our work by adding the joint relative frequencies in a row or column to see if the sum equals the marginal relative frequencies for that row or column. Of the t-shirts sold, the joint relative frequencies frequency of males who bought a blue shirt is, can you see males who bought a blue shirt? So here's male and here's blue shirt. It's 20% or 0 0.20 or 10 fiftieths. See, it's 0 0.20 or 20%. That's the joint relative frequency. See how it's up here inside of here? It's not along the margin. The marginal relative frequency of shirts bought by males, see it's marginal, so it's going to be along the margin is 40%. Here's males, and the total is 0.40 or 40%. See how it's along the margin? So that's the marginal relative frequency. 
and the joint one we found because it was on the inside here. So, in a two-way relative frequency table, the joint relative frequency tells us what part of all the data falls at the intersection of certain value. So it would be this 10 over the 50. That's the intersection. 10 sold out of 50. See that? So it's that certain val variable and a certain value of another variable. So it's 10 out of 50. The marginal relative frequency tells us what part of the entire data set down here and along here, along the margin, that represents a certain value of just one of the variables. So this is just red. So that's the marginal one for red. This is blue, so that's the marginal one for blue. That's green, that's the marginal one for green. This is just female, so that's the marginal for female. And male, marginal for male. See how it just does one of the variables? So the joint relative frequency was like red and female is 10 over 50. See? You take the number sold divided by the grand total. See? And the marginal one would be like 30 over 50. So that would be the total sold to females over the total sold. See that? So I know this is a lot of new words and I know it can be really confusing. If you're really, really confused, just play the video again. Just like a video game, if you can't beat a level, you don't just quit and walk away or go on to the next level. You can't go on to the next level. You gotta beat that level to go on with it. So watch the video again, take some notes, and if you have to watch it a couple times, no big deal. It doesn't take that many minutes to watch the video. Just like playing a video game, you just keep doing it until you can beat that level, okay? So we're going to continue on, and we're going to uh, move on to the next topic, which is calculating conditional relative frequencies. Like we mentioned down here, we're going to talk about how to calculate these conditional relative frequencies, okay? And don't forget... That link for 15.2a is in the description if you're really confused and want to see them all side by side. Okay? 15.2f, we've only got two more videos and we're finished with 8th grade math. Bye!